Well, here we are again talking about functions and relations and how to tell whether a relation is a function and talking about domain and range. But before we get further down the road here, this is your first time taking notes while watching a video without me giving you a piece of paper to take notes on. So what I'd like you to do at the top of your paper is would you please write this title at the top of your paper, Functions Defined by Equations. And would you also put today's date? So you would write August 28, 2012. Now this will go in your divider under your class notes and work. Um, and this will give you some information and some important vocabulary. Now, whenever I write something here on the smart board, you should be writing that on your piece of paper. It's just like you're taking notes, but instead of taking notes in the classroom, you're taking notes at home. So you can stop and pause the video if I go too fast and replay it, or you can just continue going at the regular speed. So let's get started. Well, first of all, let's talk about some key vocabulary here. So we notice a function is a correspondence between two sets. Now remember, we know a function is when each input value has exactly one and only one output. Now in a function, the two sets are the domain, which represents the x value, and the range. And we assign exactly each member of the domain to one and only one member of the range. So each member of the domain to exactly one member of the range. So here we have a listing of the domain. We have four elements in the domain, and then we also have four elements in the range. So I'm going to do a mapping here. So in my mapping, zero will go to zero, okay? One will go to two. Two will map to four, and three will map to six. So this is one representation of my function. This is called a mapping. Now I could also list this in a different manner. I can list it as a table. So if we have the x and y, we would list 0, 0 as the first ordered pair, 1, 2, 2, 4, and 3, 6. Now we could also graph those ordered pairs and have a graph of this function. Okay? Now, oh, one, here we go. Something that will be new to you is how to write this algebraically. So remember, we should be able to express things numerically, graphically, algebraically, and verbally. So let's write it algebraically. Now, many times we will call our functions, they'll be given the name f, which makes sense, function f. And we'll write it like this, f of x. Now, that does not imply multiplication. It just means the function has a name. It's called f. And we're going to use the input will be the x variable. Now, equals. Now, if you look over here at the table, if this is my x values, and these are the output values, what math do you notice is happening? What math do I use on the zero to get to zero? It has to be the same math max. How do I go from one to two? From two to four? From three to six? And if this was x, what math? do I do to get from x to the new output? Hopefully you're realizing that we're multiplying by 2 each time. So, this function, f of x, algebraically, is represented by 2 times x. So that means for every input value of x, I take the input and multiply it by 2 to get the output. This is function notation. Okay? Let's practice that a little more. So, let's look at this example. Now, the numbers are kind of weird. Like, for example, this is number 8. That's because I'm taking these examples from your book. Notice it's in section 8, 7, and this is example 8. Now, if you want more practice, you could look at problem 7, right? So it's an odd number, and you could practice that and look check the answer in the back of the book. Okay, so for this problem, we are given the domain, and we are asked to find the range. So the name of this function is called m of x. Now, we're not multiplying, it's just the name of it. So what this says for my function m, function m takes the domain values, so that's what it means the domain, which is x, and performs this operation. Okay? Let's just do this one step at a time. So when the input is negative 1, 
we're going to take the negative 1 and we're going to input in the function. So I'm going to have negative 1 squared plus 5 times negative 1 plus 2. So notice I replaced x with a negative 1. Now let's simplify the expression. So negative 1 times negative 1 is 1, minus 5 plus 2. 1 minus 5 is negative 4 plus 2. So the result would be negative 2. So then the first value in the range then would be negative 2. Now let's find the second value of the range. So I'm still using the m function, m of negative 2. So I have negative 2 squared plus 5 times negative 2 plus 2. So I'm going to have 4 minus 10 plus 2. So left to right I have negative 6 plus 2. So the result is negative 4. And then we'll do the third value of the domain. Okay, I'm running out of room, so I'm going to erase my words here. So I'm still using the m function, but now my domain value is negative 4. So I have negative 4 squared plus 5 times 4 plus 2. So we have 16 plus 20 plus 2. Is that correct? Oh, wait, did you notice I copied the problem down? Wait, what did I do wrong? Oh, can you see my mistake? Bing, 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 bing. Remember, the input value is a negative 4, and I put a positive 4. I hope you noticed that. Okay, so this should be minus 20. There we go. So now I have negative 4 plus 2. So then the value for the range is negative 2. Okay, Let me, now I'm like sketchy. Am I, am I, did I do this right? 16 minus 20 plus 2. Negative 4 plus 2, negative 2, good. 4 minus 10, okay. I think I'm good. So this is the range given that domain. Now, number 14. Now, I'd like you to do 14 on your own. And then at the end of the video, there's going to be a form, and I'm going to ask you to submit your answers to 14A, 14B, and 14C. And then we'll check to see if you were correct. Now, I'll help you with 14a to get it set up. So it's saying use the p function with a domain of 2. Okay? So we're told that the p function says to go a minus 4 times your value of the domain, which is x, right? x values represent domain. So for this problem, I'm going to substitute the value of 2. Okay? Oh, it turns out I'm doing the whole thing for you, aren't I? 8 minus 8 is 0. Okay. So on the form, I'm going to ask you to tell me the response to 14B and 14C. Okay, moving on along. Now this example, um, we're looking at example number 26, and I'll help you do the first part, and you'll be responsible for the second part. So the name of our function is function m, and for this function, I am going to use an, as an input the variable y. That's right, we could use any variable. It could be m, and the input is r. It could be m, and the input is z. Okay? Anything like that. So for this problem, my y value is negative 1 half. So wherever I see a y, I'm going to replace it with negative 1 half. So it would be negative 1 half times 1 minus 2 times negative 1 half. Ooh, I'm testing order of operations. Now remember, order of, opera order of operations says to do the parentheses first. So I'm going to leave this negative 1 half alone, and I'm going to go negative times a negative is a positive, and then the 2 divided by 2, this reduces to a 1, so 1 times 1 is 1. Okay, I'm going to continue simplifying within the parentheses, so I get negative 1 half times 2, so a negative times a positive is a negative, and 2 simplifies to 2 becomes 1, so it becomes a negative 1. So the domain, when the domain is negative 1 half, the range is negative 1. Now you do the same example, but this time use 0 for your input. Okay? You can press pause in the video if you need more time. Ne next example. Now this is a little different. Let's read the directions together. For each function, first find the value of the range when the given domain is 0. And then, ooh, this is different. Now what's happening is you are given the range, and you have to find the domain. Oh, tricky, tricky. Let's do A first. So A says we want to find the value of the x 
function when the domain is zero. So I'm going to go 4 times 0 plus 7. So this is what we've been doing all along. 0 plus 7, so the result is 7. Okay? So when f of 0 equals 7. Now part b says, well, when your function is equal to 0. So f of x is equal to 0. Well, we're told that if we look up here, f of x is 4x plus 7. So when 4x plus 7 equals 0, can you find the value for x? No, you can't. We're going to use a subtraction property of equality and subtract 7. So I get 4x equals negative 7. And then I'm going to use the division property. Sorry, I ran out of room here. So I have 4x equals negative 7. And I'm going to divide both sides by 4. So then the given domain would be negative 7 fourths, or a negative 1 3 fourths. So when the range is 0, the domain would be negative 1 3 fourths. Okay. Let's try this one together. So again, it's the same type of problem. Given the domain, find the range. In this example, given the range, find the domain. Okay? So, for part A, f of 0, so you're going to replace x with the value of 0. So I do my order of operations, so I do multiplying first. So 1 half times 0 is 0. So 3 would be the range. So f of 0 equals 3. Now for part B, we're told that the function is equal to 0. That's the range. So we're told the function is 3 minus 1 half x equals 0. Now this is a good review problem because some of you missed problems like this on your test we just took. So I need to solve for x. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides to isolate the variable. So I get negative 1 half x equals negative 3. Now I need to solve for x. So now I'm going to use my property of reciprocals. The reciprocal of negative 1 half is negative 2 over 1. So I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 2. Well, we know any number multiplied by its reciprocal is 1. So I get a positive 1x is equal to 6. So when the range is 0, then the domain will be 6. Great. Great work. And let's see. Oh, yes. This is going to be our last example here. Okay. Now, make sure you take really good notes on this. So I'm going to use the function f, and I'm told the function f is 3x minus 1. And the input, the domain, is 5. So it's 3 halves times the result of f of 5. Well, it's going to be 3 halves, and what's the f function? 3 times 5 minus 1. Now, how did I do that? Because remember, the f function is 3x minus 1, and we're told the domain is 5. Now, first thing I'm going to do is work within the parentheses, order of operations, the grouping brackets. So I'm going to do multiplication first, 15 minus 1. 15 minus 1 is 14, so this is times 14. And we know that 2 can reduce into 14 7 times, so 3 times 7 is 25. Okay? Now let's do the same work here. So it's the f function given the domain is 5, and we're going to add it to the f function given the domain is negative 1. So let's try that. So it's 3x minus 1. This is going to be 3 times 5 minus 1. So this range for a given domain of 5 added to 3 times negative 1 minus 1. So notice how I'm adding the ranges of two given domains. So I'm going to do order of operations first. So I get 15 uh, multiplied first minus 1. Okay, so that's one range. And then here, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3 minus 1. So I'm going to have 14 is the domain, is the range when the domain is 5. And then negative 3 minus 1 is a negative 4. That's the range when the domain is negative 1. 14 minus 4 is 10. Woo! Nice work. Now make sure you answer the questions that are attached below.
Well, hello. Here we are to our second video in this unit, um, talking about functions with domain and range. Now, since this is the first time you're taking notes without me giving you a piece of paper to write on, what I'd like you to do is, at the top of your paper, would you please put this title, Functions Defined by Equations. You could neatly write this out. And then after it, you can put the date, which is August 28th. 2012. It's important to always have a date on your notes and to have a title. That way, if it gets misplaced from your binder, you know where to put it in. Okay, now let's, um, now every time I write an example on the video, you need to be writing that example on your paper. So our objective today is to be able to define a function by using equations. So we're going to, you know how we do graphical, numerical, algebraic, and verbal? Remember, we navigate through algebra. So today we're going to focus on the algebraic representation of functions. We've done graphs, we've done numbers, and we've verbally explained them. Okay, so given this domain and given this range, let's do a mapping. So I'm going to put the numbers of the domain in this initial map. Then I'm going to put the numbers of the range in this map. And I'm going to map 0 goes to 0, 1 maps to 2, and we know 2 maps to 4, and then 3 maps to 6. Ooh, a little squiggly there, huh? Okay, so we have a mapping of this function. Now, what we need to do is we need to represent this algebraically. But before we do that, let me minimize this so we can see. Let's make a table of this data. It helps us sometimes to be able to come up with the function. So the domain was 0, 1, 2, 3. The range was 0, 2, 4, 6. Now I want you to look at the domain and look at the range. Can you see what mathematical operation is being performed to get from the value 0 to 0? That was not quite so obvious, but maybe here. What do I do to the input 1 to get an output of 2? Now you have to do the same operation. What same operation do you do the input of 2 to have an outcome of 4, 3 to have an outcome of 6. I hope that you're seeing that we're multiplying the input by 2. So if it was x, I take the x and I multiply it by 2. So it would be 2x. So that's an algebraic representation of the pattern. Well, let's write this in func function notation. Now for function notation, it's written a specific way. This is a function because each input has exactly one output. So we're going to call it the function x in respect, and our domain values, are we've labeled them as x. So this does not mean multiplication. This means the function, the function, and its title is f of the domain values x. Okay, the function of the f, the function f of x. Now, what is this function doing? What is the machine producing? It's saying take the input value and multiply it by 2. Take the x value and multiply it by 2. That is function notation. f of x is 2 times x. Now, I don't always have to use the letter x. I could say g of x. It's just a name would be 2 of x, 2 times x. Or this relationship could be represented by Kleiber of x is 2x. So you see the letter G, the letter F, just helps us to notate it, give it a name so I can identify it. Oh, check out the G of x function. Woohoo! Okay, now let's work within this idea. So here you can see the name of my function is F. And the input value, the domain, is going to be represented by F. So that's the domain. And this is the name of the function. Now, this function is saying take the domain, square it, then multiply it by 5 and add it, and then add the constant 2. So let's do that for the given domain. So we have three given domains, so we'll end up with three values for the range. So I'm going to take the given domain and square it, then I'm going to add it to 5 times the given domain, and then add the constant 2. So now you do your order of operations. Whoops, did you catch my mistake? It's the given domain squared. So negative 1 times negative 1 is 1, minus 5 plus 2. So it's negative 4 plus 2 equals negative 2. 
So the range for given value, negative 1, is negative 2. Now remember, if I go too fast, you can pause, you can replay the video. Now let's do what if the given domain is negative 2. So again, I'm going to take the x value, substitute it into the function. So it's negative 2 squared plus 5 times negative 2 plus 2. So I'm going to result would be 4 minus 10 plus 2. So I end up with negative 6 plus 2, which is negative 4. And then let's try our last value, which is negative 4. So I'll have negative 4 squared plus 5 times negative 4 plus 2. So we have 16 minus 20 plus 2. So it's negative 4 plus 2. So the result is negative 2. Now remember, pause and slow down when you need to. But you should have all these examples written down. Okay, now, did you have you noticed the wacky numbering by chance? 14. Miss Carter, why did you skip to 14? Well, actually, I don't know if you've noticed here, but I am taking these examples from Chapter 8, Section 7 in your book. So if you need to look at more examples like this, you can open your book to that section and maybe look at an odd number, like number 13, and check to see if your work is good. Okay, so now, on this example, I'm going to do the first one with you, but then you're going to have to do B and C on your own. So this function is called P, and we're given the domain of 2. So wherever there is an x value, an input value, I'm going to substitute 2. So it's going to be 8 minus 4 times 2. So 8 minus 8, which gives me an output of 0. Now you're going to repeat that process for B and C. Now you do that, and then we'll check to see I did. So stop and pause the video. Okay, here's another example. This function is called m. But notice my domain values now. We're labeling, labeling them. And why? You can use any variable you like to label your domain. Okay? So now in this example, I'm going to use the m function. And my input is going to be a negative 1 half. So wherever I see y in the function, I'm going to replace it with negative 1 half. So I have negative 1 half times 1 minus 2 times negative 1 half. Now, using my order of operations, I'm going to simplify within the parenthetical statement first. And I always do multiply before subtraction. So negative times negative is a positive, and half of 2 is 1. So I get 1 half of 2, which is 1. Okay, now you please try letter C. Okay. Oh, wow, the directions are changing. Let's check this out. There's A and B. A is something we've been doing. Find the value of the function when the domain is 0. Okay, we've been doing that. Now this one's a little bit different. What is, I want to find the domain. That is my unknown. Given that the range equals 0. So in this example, I'm given the range, but I need to find the domain. Let's try it. Let's do A first for function f. So we're told that the domain is 0. Can you find the range? So 4 times 0 plus 7. 0 plus 7. So when the domain is 0, the range will be 7. Okay, we get that. Now, in part B, it says, given my function, what domain will give me a range of 0? Hmm. Well, the function is 4x plus 7. You guys see how I replaced that? Because up here I'm told f of x is 4x plus 7. Now, when that equals 0, when that has a range of 0, what will x be? Well, this is just review from last chapter. We're going to subtract 7 from both sides because we're solving for x. Then we're going to divide by 4. So it's going to be negative 7 fourths. That would be the value of the domain given a range of 0. Okay, let's try one more of those examples. What do you say? Here we go. We're given an f of function, and again, for letter a, if the domain is 0, can you find the range? So we're going to replace x with 0. So we end up with 3 halves minus 0. What 3 minus 1 half times 0, which is 3. Now for part b, they tell us what is the domain given the range is 0. So they tell you the range, but you need to find the value of the domain. Okay. Well, we're told f of x is 3 minus 1 half x. That's what we're told. So now let's solve for x. 
So we're going to use the subtraction property first. So we get negative 1 half x equals negative 3. And now we're going to use our property of reciprocals. The reciprocal of negative 1 half is negative 2. So whenever you multiply a number by its reciprocal, it's just 1. So I get 1x equals 6. So in this example, the domain is 6 when the range is 0. Very nice work. Now is there another example? Um, there is, but we're going to stop there for now. So let's stop there and then make sure you answer the questions that are included at the end of the video.